Good morning, M4. In today's math, we are still going to talk about fraction quantities. So let's do a recap of what we have learned yesterday. On the board, you will see three fractions. We have one-half, one-fourth, and one-third. And for us to get the fraction quantities, we just have to divide the number on our denominator. Whatever the den denominator is, we're just going to divide our given number. For example, we have the number, let's say, 24. Now we will get the fraction quantities of 24. What is the one-half of 24? To get the one-half of 24, we just have to divide 24 with our denominator 2 to get the one-half of 24. So 24 divided by 2 is... 12. So, one half of 24 is 12. What about one fourth? How do we get the one fourth of 24? Again, we just divide 24 with our denominator and for one fourth, we have 4. So, 24 divided by 4. So, the answer is 6. One fourth of 24 is 6. And on the third fraction, we have one third. And here, our denominator is 3. So therefore, we are going to divide 24 with 3. So 24 divided by 3 is, <coughs> excuse me, um, 8. So therefore, the one third of 24 is 8. Simple as that. All you have to remember, again, you're just going to divide the given number, whatever the given number is, you're going to just divide it with the denominator, whatever the denominator is. Now it's easy because we are just we are we only have one as our numerator. As you can see, we have one here, one and one. But what if our numerator is not one? How do we deal with that? How do we get the fraction quantities if the numerator is not 1? I will give you an example. Now you can see on the board we have the fraction 2 thirds and we have the number 15. It means we need to get the 2 thirds of 15. Now our numerator is not 1 anymore. So therefore, we need to add an extra step to get the fraction quantities of 15 or to get the two-thirds of 15. Okay, first step to that is the same with the one numerator. What you have to do is still divide the number. In this case, we have 15. You still have to divide the number with our denominator. Let me just put it right here. Step one. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can pause the video to copy if you want to write down on your note. Not bad. Step one, you are going to divide the number on the denominator. In this case, we have 15 and our denominator is 3. I'm just going to write in the parenthesis. 15 divided by 3. Close parenthesis. Now we have to divide 15 <clears throat> by 3. And we have 2 on top of here. So what do we do with 2? So we are going to multiply that. So we just put outside the parenthesis times 2. Just like that. Again, we are going to multiply, rather divide 15 with our denominator, which is 3. And after we do that, we are going to times it with 2. Now, step 2. We, we, we divide, 15 divided by 3 is, correct, it's 5. We are going to do the one inside the parenthesis first. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. We still have times 2 here. So step 2, we multiply, we multiply it to our numerator. In this case, our numerator is 2, so we multiply it by 2. 5 times 2 is, and the answer is, very good. The answer is 10. Therefore, 2 thirds of 15 is? Answer is 10. 
okay if we are going to put that into a graph i'm gonna make a graph here let's say we have a box okay let's make two sides here okay mm. Okay. We're going to make a graph. Sorry for the drawing. <laughs> anyway, our two thirds. We are going to make a graph for our fraction two thirds. How many total parts? We have the denominator three, so one, two, three. So the total part is three. And uh, one, what, one side is equivalent to five, so five. Five, five, and how many parts do we we do we have to shade? We check, of course, our numerator. There's two, so if we shade this part and we shade this part, so the two thirds. If we're going to add that, five plus five is also equals ten. So that's how you get the fraction quantities if the numerator is not one. This is the step. Again, you can pause the video so that you can copy the step in your notepad. I'll give you another example. Here's another example if our numerator is not 1. So we have the fraction 7 tenths. So we need to get 7 tenths of 60. What is 7 tenths of 60? So we have to do the step 1. Step 1 again. What's the step 1? We are going to divide our number in this case we have 60 to our denominator open parenthesis 60 divided by 10 and then we are going to multiply the 7 so you just write time 7 outside your parenthesis now we go to step 2 step 2 so we divide first 60 divided by 10 is of course 6 and we still have 7 here, we multiply our numerator 7 times 7. 7 comes from our numerator, okay? Don't forget, we always multiply our numerator. So if you might ask, where does 7 com comes from? It comes from our numerator. So 6, you might also think, where does 6 come from? It comes from here, 60 divided by 10. 60 divided by 10, again, it's 6 times our numerator 7. So 6 times 7, the answer is, very good, the answer is 42. Therefore, 7 tenths of 60 is 42. Simple as that. Okay? <clears throat> so just a quick recap for fraction quantities. If we have the numerator 1, the example we have here, 1 8, what we need to do is to just move, rather divide the number to our denominator. In this case, we have 72, so we are just going to divide 72 with 8. So 72 divided by 8, so that's the step 1. I'll just write S1. So that's, I'm not going to write it, you might get confused. Anyway, 72 divided by 8, so... The answer for that B is 9. Therefore, 1 8 of 72 is 9. Simple as that. So remember, that is if our numerator is only 1. But if our numerator is not 1, like in the example down here, we have 5 8, and we need to get the, the 5 8 of 72. So again, the first step, The first step is to divide our number 72 to our denominator 8. 72 divided by 8. And of course, we multiply our numerator 5. We put outside here. Oh, sorry. 5 is 5. So go to step 2. After you, after you divide this, you will get... You will get 9. 72 divided by 8 is equals to 9. And we still have times 5 here. So we times 5 here. So 9 times 5 
is equals to 45. Therefore, the 5 8 of 72 is 45. Simple as that. So on your activity, you will be doing, um, you will be getting fraction quantities with the numerator 1, as well as with a numerator higher than 1. And aside from that, you will be having in your um, activities word problem. You will be given a situation and you have to understand, please understand the situation, read the sentence pro properly or read the problems properly and understand what fraction is being asked. I will give you an example for that activity. Okay, on the word problem that you can see on the board, it says there are 12 eggs in a box. Five sixths are used. How many eggs have been used? Now check and understand the sentence. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll ask, but there's no fraction here. I can't see any fraction. But if you're going to read the sentence properly, on the second, it says five sixths. And then the total eggs there are 12. So the question is, how many eggs have been used? Here in the second sentence, it says five sixths are used. So therefore, we need to look for five sixths, if you're going to write the infraction, five sixths of how many? Of 12 eggs. So we need to look for five sixths of 12. Now our, now our numerator is not one. So therefore, we need to use two steps to get our answer. First one, we have to divide our number, which is 12, to our denominator, which is 6. So 12 divided by 6, close open parenthesis, and we multiply our numerator, which is 5, times 5, we put outside. Step number 2, we get the answer here. 12 divided by 6 is equals to 2, and then we multiply or times it with 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Therefore, 5 6 of 12 is, is 10. On your, on your paper, you need to write the sentence, there are 10 used eggs. Okay, I don't have any space here, so I can write, but you have to write the sentence, okay? But you, you also have to show your solution. So this is one of the word um, problem that you will encounter in your activity. I'll give you one more example for word problem and that would be it. Okay, another example for word problem. On the board you will see the problem. There are 20 students in the classroom. Two-fifths like math, one-fourth like English. How many students like math, English, other subject? Now, there are three questions here. We are going to count for math, English, and other subject. Now, we look at it one by one. First, we have for math. You read the question properly, okay? Now, we check for math. First question is math. Math, how many or what's the fraction for math? There are two-fifths who liked math. So, how many total number of students? There are... 20. So we are going to show it like this. How? What's the fraction? Two fifths. Two fifths of total number of students? 20. So we need to get two fifths of 20. Again, our numerator is more than one. So we have to follow two steps. First, we are going to divide rather our number to our numerator, which is, which is five and times it by 2, our numerator. So, next step, 20 divided by 5 is equals to 4 times 2. Total number is 8. Therefore, there are 8 students who like, who like math. Now, next question, English. We have English here. How many students like English? There are one-fourth. So we are one fourth rather. So we have one fourth here. One fourth. We need to get one fourth of the total number of students. One fourth of twenty. 
Now, in this case, our numerator is 1. So we only have to follow one step. We are just going to divide our number 20 to our denominator, to our denominator 4. So 20 divided by 4 is equals to, of course, 5. Therefore, there are 5 students who like English. 5 students who like English. Now, other subjects it asks about it asks also about other subjects what you just have to do is you're going to add 8 plus 5 8 plus 5 is total 13 I'll just make a small space over here so you have 13 and the total number of students is 20 so 8 plus 5 is 13 you're just going to take away because the 13 already like math and English. So you're just going to take away the 13 from the 20. So 20 take away 13 or minus 13 is equals 7. There are four other subjects. There are seven students who like other subjects. That's just how you get the answer. All right. Again, and four, you can always replay the video to watch the parts that you are not sure or if you are confused you can always skip to that part and read or rather and listen to the instruction okay for further instruction i am going to write it on top of the material that i'm going to send so please read the instructions carefully all right so good luck to your activity and make sure you take clear photos please not too far all right See you in the next lesson.